But like, like I said, I'm a bloke, I like to skive, I'm a bit of a skiver. And another place I like to go to if I get the time is I like to go to my local petrol station. I like to hang out there for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little thrill. What I like about it is because they sell booze and porn, it's like I've had a night out, you know? <laughs> And they don't sell what, any ordinary booze, you know, you know, like Foster's, you know. I'd call that a driving beer, wouldn't you, Foster's, yeah? <laughs> That's a good drive. A couple of those doesn't make any difference, does it? <laughs> I sometimes take a can to the doctor's surgery. You know, you... <laughs> Jack Foster's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Want that? yeah, yeah. Four. It's nothing, is it, four? Yeah. <laughs> now, my local petrol station, they sell special brew. In a petrol station, that's... As you can't drive after a can of that. You couldn't operate a brush. <laughs> As, last time I had a can of special brew, within 20 minutes, I was shouting at lollipop ladies. <laughs> you safety bitches! <laughs> And the amazing thing about Special Brew, if you notice, is you never see it advertised, do you? Nobody, you never, no, I've never seen an advert for Special Brew, you know? I suppose there's no point, is there? You know? The people who drink it can't be reached by normal advertising, <laughs> can they? <laughs> if you want to advertise to them, you've got to book space on the side of stray dogs. <laughs> I've got new glasses as well, which I'm very pleased with, yeah? I'm going to spec savers, yeah. But this wasn't my idea, someone suggested it to me. very rude of them since I've just fallen in the river. <laughs> Should have got the spec savers, mate. <laughs> you don't even know if I can swim. Because that's how I swim, upright and camp. <laughs> now, I like wearing glasses. People say to me, why don't you get that laser operation on the eye? And I don't want to do that for two reasons. Firstly, because, because I know that out there somewhere is an eye surgeon who's a bit like me. You know, a bit slapdash. <laughs> bit of a bodger, you know. <laughs> Got through all the exams somehow, kept his head down, nobody ever really noticed. <laughs> and now he's operating on my eye with a laser beam. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon that's enough? Do you reckon that, that's it? Yeah, a bit more, can't hurt, can it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit, that's too much, isn't it? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa, I'll tell you what, when he wakes up, tell him it's free. <laughs> but also, apparently, when you have it done, you can smell your own eye burning. Uh, I've never liked that smell. <laughs> it's right up there with dry roasted peanuts for me. Like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but also, what I like about wearing glasses is any time I want, I can do this, right? And the world's a completely different place, isn't it? It's a sort of fuzzy, soft focus, dreamy landscape. But nothing really bad can happen. Normal people have to take drugs to feel like this. They really do. <laughs> with my glasses off, I'll drive through gaps I wouldn't dream of with them on. <laughs> but it's fine when I take my glasses off, that's fine. It's when other people want to try your glasses on. We've got, we've got, here we've got a couple of glasses wearers here, you two here. Have you, you know, it says, you know when people ask to try your glasses on, yeah? They never wait to be handed them, do they? <laughs> like, never. Anyone says, can I try your glasses on? They don't wait for you to give them. They just whip them off your face, don't they? <laughs> it's so rude. They just, like, whip them off your face. You go, oh, thanks very much, I'm blind, thank you. <laughs> then, right, they, what they do is they put them on and they go, ha, 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 ha! <laughs> How do you see through these? <laughs> they basically just laugh in your face. Ha, <laughs> ha, <laughs> you're fucking blind, aren't you? So rude! You wouldn't got someone in a wheelchair, would you go? Let's have a go in that, mate. <laughs> How'd you get about in this thing? <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous, this thing, isn't it? <laughs> I've got three children, very lucky man. I was only thinking that the other day, I was in the kitchen reading a newspaper. I heard a little voice go, Daddy, I'm finished! <laughs> From somewhere in the house. Well, hopefully the toilet. <laughs> no way. And as I was wiping the bottom, I thought to myself, you lucky bastard. 
Because that's what they say, don't they? They say, oh, you're very lucky, and oh, don't they grow up fast? Don't they grow up fast? And that's true, actually. My oldest daughter, she's nearly six, came up to the other day. She said, Dad, I think I'm too old for sea babies. Yeah, I don't want to watch sea babies anymore. You know, she doesn't talk like that, by the way. She doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> she draw a bigger crowd than me. Didn't you? <laughs> no, she said, I'm too old for sea babies. I want to watch CBBC. Sea babies is for little kids. And I didn't say this. I was going to say this, but I stopped myself. I was going to say, oh, really? Too old for sea babies, are you? Then how come, right? How come you've got a squirrel on your T-shirt, yeah? <laughs> Big fluffy squirrel, and he's holding a balloon. <laughs> oh, aren't you mature? Yes. <laughs> oh, let's step back and let the big lady come through. <laughs> I didn't say that because my wife doesn't like me treating the kids like hecklers. <laughs> and also, apparently, stuff you say to kids when they're little, right? Apparently, it affects them when they're older. I know, sounds mad, doesn't it? You say something to when they're little, when they're older, they go, oh, I need some crack. You know? <laughs> I don't know who came up with that crackpot idea. Like, rains on Wednesday, don't get wet till Friday. Bonkers, isn't it? You know? There's all kinds of theories about bringing up kids. Apparently, right, you're not supposed to shout at children. <laughs> How's that supposed to work? There's a car coming. <laughs> I do, I, I hate that phrase, I hate that phrase, because I'm a very patriotic sort of person. I am very, terribly, really patriotic, I'm very patriotic. I don't show my patriotism in the normal, traditional ways, you know, like during, during the World Cup, for example, my car wasn't covered in the flag of St George. In fact, I got into an argument with a guy uh, at, at some traffic lights, he pulled up alongside me, and his car was covered in the flag of St George. And he looked across at me, and he'd seen me on some football panel show, and he went, uh, call yourself an England fan, where's all your flags? Because he was quite a sort of generic, stereotypical character. And... <laughs> And I said, look, mate, all those flags on your car, so they're made in China, yeah? Made in China. Whereas if you look closely, you'll notice that I am driving a Rover, <laughs> yeah? Comes bottom in every top gear pole and what car pole for economy, safety, handling, comfort. It's a piece of shit, right? <laughs> but it's English. I said, when I get home, I'll have a can of Carling. It's disgusting. <laughs> the taste of the crows pissed in your bath. And it'll be lukewarm, because we've got a hot point fridge. <laughs> you put more than six things in it, it can't cope. It starts to heat them up. <laughs> and then I'll go and sit on my DFS sofa, highly uncomfortable, highly flammable. <laughs> I could have got a much better one, half the price from Ikea, but they're Swedish, so they can fuck off. <laughs> then I'll switch on my Red Diffusion TV set. <laughs> Like this. <laughs> I'd like to watch, you know, The Sopranos or CSI or something like that. I can't. I've got to watch Keeping Up Appearances on UK Gold. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not even boring. <laughs> Actually makes me want to self-harm. Ah. <laughs> I said, my life's a misery, mate. If I want to fly anywhere, I've got to go out and rent an old Spitfire. <laughs> and go around old people's homes trying to find a pilot. I said, then my wife comes home, she's in a bad mood. Yes, she'd been to the beauty parlour. She wanted a full Brazilian, right? But for obvious reasons, I wouldn't let her. No, no. She had to have a full English. <laughs> they actually put hair on. <laughs> it's like walking around with a doormat between your legs. <laughs> talent, talent, that's a word that always promises a lot more than it delivers, isn't it? Particularly when it's preceded by Britain's got, isn't it? <laughs> It should, be, it should be called freaks, isn't it? Britain's got freaks. <laughs> Britain's got desperate freaks who look like they've just come out of the sea. <laughs> yeah, desperate freaks who really have left it so late in life to give them any chance of improving their surroundings or their lifestyle, you know? But they've got to a point now where they're standing in lederhosen, singing Bright Eyes, beating themselves over the head with a tray, <laughs> thinking, this will get me out of negative equity. <laughs> Not, not Susan Boyle, though. She's a very different case, isn't she? She's a very talented woman. And also, she's a very powerful weapon in the war against terrorism, Susan Boyle, yeah. Because a lot of young extremists are thinking twice about blowing themselves up. Now they know what a real virgin looks like. 